If you like Christopher Nolan movies, then stick around, because you're about to discover 10 behind-the-scenes facts you never knew about the mind-bending action thriller Inception. Christopher Nolan loves to do things old school by filming as much of the action on set as possible, which created a problem for the Paris disintegration scene, because he wanted to blow up a set in the middle of Paris, but the local authorities wouldn't allow him to use explosives, and he also wanted Leo DiCaprio and Ellen Page to be in the shot, so they used air mortars to cause the explosions, and the actors were placed in a designated safe zone so that not even a cup on their table would be blown over during the blasts, and they added in all the extra debris in post-production. The major characters in the film represent several key players in the filmmaking industry. Arthur the Point Man is the producer, who has to solve a myriad of problems during the production. Ariadne the Architect is the production designer who builds all the sets. Eames the Forger is an actor and understands people's motivations. Robert who is the Mark is the audience. Saito is the studio executive who provides the cash and oversees the project's development. And Dom is the director who fittingly bore a striking resemblance to Christopher Nolan. To get the shot of the freight train driving down the road, they built the shell of the train onto a 36-foot long semi-truck drivetrain. The train itself was built out of plywood and fiberglass molds, and the engine was built out of steel. Something else you may not have noticed about the train is that the numbers 3502 written on the front are the same numbers in reverse that are written on the taxi. Another hidden secret about the first dream level is that the state nickname on every license plate is the alternate state. The names of the main cast of characters had some hidden symbolic meanings. For example, Ariadne is named after King Minos' daughter in Greek mythology, who helps Theseus navigate a labyrinth. Cobb's wife, Maul, acts as an obstacle that the characters must overcome, so it's no coincidence that her name in French means bad or sad. DiCaprio's character is driven by his desire to return home, and in Russian and many Slavic languages, a word for home is dom, similar to domicile in English. The last name Cobb also has significance too. In many East Indian languages, such as Hindi for example, the phonetic spelling of Cobb means dream. Not only do the names themselves carry significance, but there's also symbolism to be found when you put all the names together. If you combine the first letter of the main character's names, they spell the words dreams pay. The song used to wake the characters in a not-so-good French accent is Non Je Ne Regret Rien by Edith Piaf. The film's main theme by composer Hans Zimmer was actually modeled after that song in a much slower tempo. Another interesting parallel between the song and the movie is in their runtimes. Inception runs for 2 hours and 28 minutes, which mirrors the French song that runs for 2 minutes and 28 seconds. To do the tilting bar effect, they had to build the set on a seesaw rig, where the cameras were bolted down, and the crew needed to hold on so they didn't fall over while filming. But to film the actors inside it, they had to hold auditions to find extras that could stay standing up in order for the effect to work. And out of all the people they auditioned, only about a third of them could actually stay standing. For the rotating corridor shots, there was a series of eight 30-foot diameter rings to create a 100-foot long hallway, and the cameras all had to be locked into the set. Joseph Gordon-Levitt was determined to do the whole scene himself, and he only had two weeks of rehearsal to learn all the choreography. The editor was so impressed by the footage of the effect that he didn't feel a need to make any edits, so he just let the corridor scene play out in one continuous shot. For the mountain fortress scene, the production crew had a problem on their hands when they almost didn't have any snow for the day of filming. They built their set outdoors in Canada four months before shooting the scene, hoping that the snow would arrive on time. But as bad luck would have it, they didn't have any snow until just the day before filming, and it dumped more snow than the area had ever seen in 30 years. If you've ever wondered if Cobb was still dreaming or not at the end, the record can be set straight by taking into account a couple key elements that explain how Cobb was in reality and not a dream. The first is that Cobb's wedding ring is only seen while he's dreaming, and in the last scenes, it's not on his finger. The second element is that Michael Caine has claimed that the ending is undoubtedly real, because after reading the script, he asked Christopher Nolan to help him know what was real and what was a dream, and the director told him that any time Caine was in a scene, it was reality. So let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree, and make sure to watch one of the suggested videos you see on the screen to discover more fun facts about your favorite films.